Hello, Internet, and welcome to my review for Sword Art Online Alicization, episode 22. Uh, when we last left our heroes, um, Eugeo was an Integrity Knight, and then he wasn't an Integrity Knight, and then he tried to kill Quinella, but failed. Uh, and so Kirito and Alice showed up uh, with Trudelkin in tow, uh, and Trudelkin went, summoned some weird, like, flame clown thing. Uh, Q and credits. Uh, so yeah, before we go into the review itself, though, just a reminder, I have my Spring 2019 uh, anime review straw poll in the description down below. Fill that out. Let me know what you want me to see review uh, come April. Uh, let's jump right on in. So, um, the Trudelkin fight doesn't really happen. Uh, Trudelkin's death is short, sweet, bloody, and more than he deserves. I was more than happy to watch Trudelkin die a grisly death. I'm not normally a kind of, like, be as bloody as humanly possible, but, like, Trudelkin deserved it. Trudelkin deserved his death. Um, you know, I, I will admit, it kind of undercuts last week's cliffhanger if Trudelkin is just, like, handled in the first, like, five minutes of the episode. But you know what? I hate Trudelkin enough that I am more than happy to see him go. I do not, I'm not really upset by that at all. Um, also, a weird thing that'll probably be important later, uh, Kirito uses his, like, sword... It's kind of like a gunblade, I think. I never actually played FF8. But he uses the sword like a, like a long-range weapon. I'm not sure how it, how it worked exactly. Uh, but when he does the attack, the important thing is his clothes change for a bit into what I think is his Einkrad outfit. Uh, we don't really get a full shot of it before it fades away, so I couldn't quite compare it. Uh, but after the attack, it fades away and he's back in his normal clothes. Uh, which lets Quinella realize who he is, uh, which I imagine means Kirito is going to have to answer to Eugeo before this is, or after this is all over, uh, given uh, Eugeo's suspicions about Kirito's identity for weeks now. Uh, but also, like, what about, like, was that a part of it? Did, was it like the Gigas Cedar is somehow tapped into Kirito's past? I don't know. I don't quite, I don't know why that happened. Um... But I fully expect that will be explained um, later on. Uh, so now we have a very long, um, about half the episode, I think, conversation about just, like, everything. <laughs> everything about Quinella and the Dark Territory and what's coming. Uh, and I love that the focus of everything, especially for Alice, is that, like, the current system is, like, unsustainable once the Dark Territory attacks. The Integrity Knights will not be enough. Um, Kirito, I do wish, was focused on the immorality of the Taboo Index that kicked off, like, that is the reason they're on their, they made it to the cathedral at all. Uh, but Alice still believes in the Taboo Index, as we saw, I think as late as episode 19, she still believed in the, uh, in the value of the, of the Taboo Index and of that kind of rigid sense of the law. Um, so, and her character's consistent focus on the unsustainability of Quinella's regime more than anything else is really her most fascinating part. Because, you know, we talk about Alice being back, um, and she's like, oh, she's back on the good side now, but really she hasn't changed. Uh, she's still really the same person she was as Synthesis 30. Uh, or she is still Synthesis 30. Uh, but she's just like, you know, realizes that Quinella is unsustainable, and that in order for her ideals to have to be met, in order for her ideals to win, she has to side with Kirito and Eugeo. Uh, and we do see repeatedly that she's still, at least up until, you know, her talk with Kirito on the wall, she still had a bunch of respect for Quinella. Uh, and her, like, she, she does not hate Quinella, I don't think. She's just, like, she's starting to, I think, now that she's, like, seeing that Quinella just does not care about any of them. By by episode's end, I'd, I'd say she hates uh, Quinella. But yeah, anyway, on to Quinella herself. Uh, one of my favorite things about Quinella was the idea that she believed that the Integrity Knights could stop the Dark Territory. That she, had, that she believed incorrectly that her plan would save the Underworld. That she was desperate enough for power that she was willing to do anything to protect the Underworld. And it just so happened that she was like, help, she thought she was helping people while also um, uh, clinging on to power. Revealing that that was actually a lie and that she's planning on letting the Dark Territory wipe out humanity and then taking over them, and somehow... So here's one they didn't quite get. The sword golem is supposed to stop Wrath somehow. I don't... Like she said, you know, I'll let you see the art that will um, help me stop Wrath from deleting the world. Um, and she... And that's right when she summons the sword golem. 
but how? How would the sword golem stop Wrath? It's not gonna unless it's gonna like pop out of the world and like chop off their hand from pressing the button. I don't know what they're gonna do. Um But anyway, anyway, that's a bit of a uh, digression. Uh, my point is revealing that she just does not care about people at all and she does has no has has no illusions of helping people uh is is disappointing. It's not like character ruining because it's she still has plenty of interest um in the plot. Um but I really like the idea what as I've said repeatedly throughout this past core is that the villains of this arc are like far better than anything Kawahara has ever done because they're so complex and they genuinely believe that what they're doing is the right thing even though it's like not because it's fucking everything up. Um and Quinella, and I, I rightly criticized Judelkin for not being that. Uh, and Quinella, we're seeing, is not that either, which I'm disappointed in. Uh, but anyway. So anyway, she uh, summons the Sword Golem, as I mentioned. And it's literally like 30 weapons, like, stuck together, ready to fight anything that moves. And, like, immediately it stabs Alice through the gut, and then stabs Kirito through the chest. And, like, holy shit. Holy shit. I was like, that just happened. I do not... I I thought... I did not think Alice would die. That would... What? <laughs> but she doesn't. I'll get to that in a hot sec. Uh, so, imme so then, Charlotte reveals that she's been with Kirito again the whole time. Um, which, at the very least, in book 12... I only just started book 13, so I'm a little bit... Not, I'm still not caught up with the, with the anime. Um, but there's no real mention of her in book 12. Um, but anyway, Charlotte shows up and gives Eugeo enough time to stab the floating platform with a dagger, which allows Cardinal to open up a door there. But before that, Charlotte dies. And, like, Charlotte has not had enough to do in the anime, primarily because they cut out the, the Zakaria Sword Tournament, which is really where she gets a lot to do uh, in the books. Um, but, like... I, having read the books, felt real bad when uh, Char Charlotte died. But, like, for an anime only, I can't imagine that, like, that really mattered at all. Charlotte was, like, barely a character in the in the anime. Uh, so I, I feel like... I, I'm sad that the anime did not give her more to do, because it just cuts out the oomph of Charlotte's death. But, like, rip Charlotte. Rip Charlotte. Uh, but anyway, Cardinal shows up and just, like, blasts the sword golem away and heals Alice and Kirito. She's too late to save Charlotte. Again, rip. Uh, but anyway, that leaves everyone together. All four of our heroes are now together, and it's finally time for the final battle with Quinella to begin. Uh, yeah. So before I get into my whole retrospective as a whole of the episode, um... I've, there have been rumors going around, because I think Monogatari is coming in to take, um, um, SAO's time slot next quarter, uh, which I'm not going to be reviewing because Monogatari is super dense, I do not trust myself to review Monogatari as great as it is, um, so I, I, I'm not sure if next week is going to be the last episode before, like, a season hiatus, uh, or if it's going, we know that Alicization as a whole is going to be four quarters, a whole year, but we don't know if those are going to be consecutive. Um, so maybe maybe next next episode will be a finale, or the episode after that will be a finale. I don't know. Um, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, we'll find out if, if this is going to be the end of the season. Uh, so yeah, this episode was definitely more of a talkie uh, than last time's cliffhanger promised it to be. You know, last time ended with the whole, like, hulking flame clown. Uh, but still, the brief fight with Trudelkin was certainly good, even as it engaged in, like, Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 levels of censorship. And it was important that we actually got to learn from Quinella who Quinella is, rather than hearing, like, secondhand from the Integrity Knights or from Cardinal. Uh, and I'm interested especially, there's this little moment that I forgot to bring up in the video itself, uh, where Quinella kind of implies that Cardinal might have been lying to Kirito, you know, when, uh, when, um, when, um, Kirito says Quinella, calls her by her original name. She notes that, like, Cardinal's been filling his head with stories, uh, and you fell for them, I think is what she says. Uh, but for now, we don't know whether or not this is just villainous bluffing, or if it's something more. 
So we'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, next time, bring on the final battle. I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the episode and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or fill up my straw poll down below, please. Or, you know, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. And as always, people, keep kicking ass and I'll see you in the future. Bye.